Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today we're going to make this really handy little pivoting fence for the bandsaw so we get nice uniform strips of wood. So let's get started. So let's just take a moment to have a look at the parts. I've already prepared this because they're just a bunch of, mostly a bunch of square parts. So this is going to be the, the main pivot area and I need to put a 45 degree angle on this. You could round that off uh, as long as there's some sort of a, at least a dull point on there. So that's going to be the pivot part, but I also cut some angle pieces to sort of support that. And here's where you can learn from my mistake. Now I was cutting plywood and I thought, oh, why didn't I just, you know, as much as I don't think plywood is great for drilling into the end grain, why don't I just make the supports out of plywood since I'm already cutting it. But look at, after I got cutting it, I noticed it's cracked. The plywood's cracked. And then I realized, you know, I got to do this properly. Um, you can't use stuff like that. You can't drill into plywood like this and expect it to do a good job. So I went ahead and I made some good quality and I've checked them. They're nice and straight there. And they're going to be some proper supports uh, that are going to hold up that pivot area. And that'll look something like that. So there's the center part that I'm going to cut. And you can see I've got my blade set at 45 degrees. And I've just eyeballed a along that plane to try and get that as close as I can. So and there you can see I just rounded that off just only took about four three or four swipes of uh, fine sandpaper on each side. That's all it needs. Now the next thing I need to do before I start attaching this superstructure on here is because I'm going to be using my mag switches I'm going to drill those holes. And I'm just going to take a moment and measure those off so I get them in the right location. Then I used my measuring bars. These are so handy. Uh, and I put another mark. So I got dual marks on there. I don't know if you can see them, but there they are uh, for the second uh, quarter hole. So anyway, I'll go ahead and drill that and you'll see what that looks like. I decided to use my pocket hole jig and drill little pocket holes in each of these sides here. And I'm only going to do it in one side because there really isn't that much pressure on this. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So this is the side that wants to go down on the top of my fence here. Um, but if you look at my fence, you'll notice that I've got the center line, but I've also got a side line. And what I'm going to do, I just want to take this and clamp that little piece of wood on there just as a guide, because when I turn this over and drill screws in, I'm not going to be able to see if it's how aligned it is. So I'm just going to take a moment and do that, and that will make sure that I get that perfectly aligned. There's a variety of reasons why you might want to be using a pivot fence like this. To cut some thin strips, maybe you need something a little bit wider. Um, maybe you're doing some banding and you need some material to do that, some thin strips to do some, some banding, for example. Uh, maybe you're doing some boxes and you want some special wood. Maybe you've got some spalted uh, or some figured wood with knots in it, for example, uh, and you want to highlight that on top of boxes. So lots of different reasons why you might be wanting to cut some very thin strips. So let's go ahead and try out our pivot fence and see how well it works. So there's the back of our pivot fence and you can see I've got the two mag switches on the back and what's nice of course is I can move that back and forth anywhere you want and just lock those down and that's 
solid on there. That's not going to go anywhere. Um, but I'm going to change it around and put it on this side so you're going to be able to see a little bit better when we do the um, banding here. And I've just got a piece of, just a piece of off cut of some spalted alder or something here. Uh, and I'm just going to draw a line on that so that I have a little bit of a guideline. And I'm going to set the pivot fence up and we'll run that through that and see what we get. And there's the piece we just cut and when you open that up you get a beautiful book matched piece of wood and the advantage of doing things like this is that you instead of having one little piece of wood now you can cut strips and you could keep on going and make more of them so you can uh, get a lot more wood especially if you've got some highly figured wood and you want to get more sort of more exposure from it um, that's a good way of doing it is to cut it into little strips like that. Well, that concludes my video for today, making a pivot fence for the bandsaw so you get nice uniform strips. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.